uh, as you can see, we are going to talk about uh, how we aim to accelerate the automotive cockpit development uh, with Panasonic's SkipGen and AWS. So let me quickly introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Patrick. I'm with AWS as a technology evangelist for automotive. And in that role, I'm working with partners like Panasonic Automotive Systems uh, to create solutions and products uh, that help the automotive industry in, um, in particular. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Masashige Mizuyama, who is the global CTO of Panasonic Automotive Systems with about uh, 20 years in uh, industry experience in mobile, semiconductors, and automotive. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, first, let me introduce some significant trends and uh, sorry, significant trends and the challenges of the automotive industry. The automotive industry is undergoing a drastic change in uh, uh, electric and electronic architectures, moving from distributed uh, di electronic control unit to uh, a consolidated, consolidated high-performance compu compute unit. Along with this, the software stack uses more open source and a de facto standard, optimized for always connected and AI-powered user experience. These are not independent events, but underpinning that vehicles are rapidly adapting and optimizing toward becoming software-defined. As a result, the ability to speedily deliver values to customers is becoming even more important competing field in the, wor in the world of SDB. In fact, if you look at independent research data, uh, the complexity of aut automotive software in cars has been rapidly increasing since the year 2000 leading to a higher number of software-related recalls and also decreasing customer satisfaction. In addition, we see an increase of cost contribution by the factor of 2.5 times um, over the same time span, um, making software costs dominant for the vehicle as a product. But these costs cannot easily be passed on to customers, lowering margins and making cost control challenges for automakers. However, this is exactly the same path uh, which the software defined, existing software defined products, such as computers and the smartphones, have followed. In other words, SDV is a game changer. Those who can advance software more rapidly will gain crucial competitive advantages. However, it requires more than just the simple effort, such as increasing coding efficiency or having larger software team. The shift in key strategies toward sophistication of architecture, a formation of a strong ecosystem, and acceleration of product discovery. Those uh, strategic shift will become more important. So what we need is a technology which enables those strategic shift. So the changing automotive e architecture requires a hypervisor for the consolidation of the software into fewer units. However, uh, fragmentation happens when the interfaces are provided in the proprietary styles, causing lock-in into vendor-specific solutions. Therefore, Panasonic has extended VAT.io, uh, which was originally developed as a device virtualization framework for servers to cover automotive in-vehicle devices. Also, Panasonic has been leading the charge to involve related players to make it common in the industry. Um, regardless of underlying 
hypervisors uh, and hardware. So as a result, um, AG Android and AGL, automotive grade Linux, has adopted um, Vertio as the standard of their device virtualization framework. In conclusion, Vertio can be said to have become an industry de facto standard for decoupling hardware and software. This allows automakers to achieve more sophisticated EE architecture to enable more rapid software development to accelerate the uh, product discovery, which I'm going to touch upon from next slides. With decoupling hardware and software, we are now able to go one step further to transform from hardware-first approach to software-first approach. As shown in the left, um, the tr traditional hardware-first approach, where the hardware is designed first to define the product value, and then software is developed uh, to make it function, tends to result in a long time to market. And also, um, the software often needs to be reworked to adapt to the hardware. So to squeeze the time to market, we can introduce hardware emulation style, as in the middle, to support software development even if hardware is not ready yet. This is shifting to a software first slightly, but the idea of hardware defined, where the hardware is designed to realize the product value, it's still the same with traditional approach. What fits best in SV, SDV era is, as shown in the right, a method of uh, continuously evolving software, which, which realizes uh, product value, and the, with appropriate timing, develop hardware, which is optimized to run that software. This cloud-native approach is based on the idea that um, software is, is the source of innovation and the most, most expensive asset of vehicle. That will evolve over vehicle's lifetime and beyond. So now, let us introduce our solution to facilitate our trans, uh, that transformation. Panasonic has originally uh, released uh, the Skipjain hardware family uh, for cockpit domain controllers, which provides multiple chip and peripheral choices with its modular hardware design and multiple hypervisor and operating system options through uh, device virtualization support using Vert.io. The Skipjain hardware has been the reference platform for both Android and AGL for many years. Now, we have moved it to the AWS cloud in order to make a virtual replica of physical Skipjain. That is virtual Skipjain. It enables uh, virtual development of digital cockpit systems such as instrument clusters and infotainment. In the, in, the, in the cloud, with the latest version of Android and AGL today, as well as um, Amazon's digital cabin products in the future. And thanks to uh, Vertio based device virtualization and the ARM architecture of uh, AWS Graviton, OS level cloud native binary parity can be achieved. Also, uh, we we, are, we provide uh, the simulated peripheral devices supported for automotive, uh, which is highly optimized for different workloads and tool chains used in a different development scenario. For example, we are supporting an option of hardware accelerated rendering and video encoding, allowing to uh, designers uh, allowing to stream into designers and the developers um, browsers on their local devices. 
this enables the close collaboration and quick turnaround time. So virtual skip chain can support numbers of use cases to relieve the pains of actual development work with traditional hardware-first approach and enable uh, software-first development. You can develop and test full cocked software uh, with um, automotive peripheral simulation and emulation before even hardware is available. You can integrate with the CI-CD workflow without the need to deploy to a physical unit, greatly simplifying global collaboration as a side effect. You can enable sustainable scaling on demand and contribute to a greener world by producing less hardware and consuming only the compute resources which you really need. And uh, as, as discussed earlier, uh, you can optimize cost leveraging the different virtual skip chain configurations, depending on the task you want to fulfill. So with our solution, customer can develop fast. They can always develop software first without waiting for hardware. The same software uh, developed and tested virtually uh, can be deployed to real hardware with high-level environmental parity. Customer can develop confidently. They can test at scale with parallelization and large-scale automation and debug with certainty uh, with uh, easier issue reproduction. They can also uh, achieve a more sophisticated CI-CD workflow uh, to enable frequent software iteration, leveraging global teams. And customer can develop comp competitively. They can develop virtually to reduce the dependency of, of, of physical hardware, which are usually um, expensive and rare. Also, they can scale the configuration to the specific needs of the customers, uh, specific needs of, the, of their teams. Now here, uh, let me hand over to our excellent AWS partner, Patrick, to give a conclusion and outlook. Patrick? Thank you very much. Yeah, there is uh, little left to say, except maybe a little bit of a conclusion. So. Again, recapping what we have seen, we have the uh, concept of going from hardware first, what we see down here, to software first in the cloud. Ms. Yamasan uh, has introduced that to you. And on the right side, you see our specific solution for that, where v uh, physical skip gens from Panasonic are available for the market to work on and do you know, final test and validation. But also, there is a virtual replica of that running on AWS Graviton uh, in AWS's cloud, offering you uh, Android, automotive-grade Linux, and other VertIO-based uh, operating systems for device virtualization. So with what we have presented, we are able to deliver on the promise of uh, software first, as we introduced as well, or Ms. Yamasan, you introduced. Uh, going from hardware first over emulation to software first. You can read yourself. I don't have to rep repeat everything that has been said. But you know, with early access to software and decoupling of hardware and software, we can do software first and then do the final validation of the software in the car later in the process. If you want to learn more, if you want to get started, please scan the QR code in the top right corner. That leads you to uh, Panasonic's uh, offering, which is available on AWS Marketplace as of today. And yeah, that's how you get started. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much.